So in this video, I'm showing you two methods on how to recover Grub. One, using the Grub Recovery Console, and two, using live installation media. So method one is the actual preferred method because literally it only takes about 30 seconds to a minute to type these commands in and usually you get back up and going. The only time method one typically doesn't work is when you're missing grub files. Usually instead of grub and then the greater than sign, you'd see grub rescue and that usually means you're missing files and if you are missing files, you do need to use live installation media to recover those files. Now I've also detailed these steps on my website. Look in the description below, there's a link, and that way you can copy paste these or record them or print them out, whatever you need. Everything that I've done in this video is on that article. So with all that said, let's go ahead and jump into method one. Okay, we're gonna actually show this on a vanilla Arch Linux install, just so you understand the basics of Grub. So first thing I'm going to do is just log in and give it a reboot just so you can see the, that we have it installed. There is Grub on here. It's very basic and everything is installed correctly. From here, we're going to actually go out and purposely break Grub. So we'll log back in this time and we're going to go into our boot directory. Now, just to give you familiarity of this, the things you need to be focusing on is one, the init RAM FS image and then the VM l-i-n-u-z dash linux one so these two files are the most important and you're probably going to see a lot more than this as you'll probably have more than one kernel this one right now only has a fallback and a regular kernel most people have three or four kernels and i highly recommend you have that many and those are just kind of the base operating system now the actual configuration such as graphics and actual what operating systems is in the grub folder under boot now, if we just do an LS here, you'll see just kind of the basics. Now let's go ahead and remove this grub config file. And we're just gonna go ahead and reinstall grub at this point. So we're gonna pretend and just do a bad grub install because that's what most people do is they go and install grub and then they just don't pay any attention. So there we go, install finished, no error reported. We should be good, right? Well, when we go to reboot, you notice we wiped out that config file. I'm betting you we're actually going to be in the grub recovery. And there we are. Now from this screen, most people are like, where the heck is everything? They're trying to do like LS commands and they get this right here. Now, normally this is actually a lot more. You'll have like CD-ROM drives. You'll have other hard drives, other partitions. This is just a very simple install with only one partition. So that's why we only have this. You'll probably see two or three and that's okay. So we have to know what partition has all our files on it so we can boot to it and set it as root. So to do this, we do ls, and then we just type all this in ht, hd0, ms, dos, and then you do have tab completion. So we'll do that, and then we do a forward slash. This does a listing, and then we can see the actual listing in this partition, and we're like, okay, that is obviously our root drive. There's a boot folder. There's all the system file folders, their home folder. I mean, everything's in here. So obviously this is our drive. So from here, we can actually set this drive as root. So we'll just do set root and then just type in our HD zero comma MS DOS one. And that sets this as the root. And from here, we just need to do Linux now. And our Linux kernel is we need to pick this out boot. And then this VM LI and then let it tab the autocomplete. And then we also need to say root equals device SDA one. Now this is a little tricky here. So you might be SDA one, it might be SDA two. You just need to know your system a little bit better than this. Um, and I'll show you here in a little bit after we completely break grub, how to kind of know that if you don't know it already. And then we need to do the init RD boot init ram.image. I uh, did that a little quick, but I just kind of want to show the two image files that I already kind of did earlier and showed. Uh, the one we want is obviously not the fallback, but the actual regular one. And there is no special root equals and all that like we had in Linux. From here, we've set the init RD and our Linux kernel, so we can just go ahead and boot. Now we're good to go. We're back in Arch. 
this did not fix our grub this is just a manual process so let's go ahead and fix our grub now we already know that the config file needs to be remade because we deleted it so let's go ahead and just go ahead and make our config and we'll do that uh, grub dash mk config output to boot grub grub dot cfg and our config file has returned and then we can just do a simple grub install now please note you can do update dash grub on debian based installations so uh all all that is uh, update dash grub is exactly what i typed in there was the grub dash mk it was just a wrapper for that so it's just like a shortcut key for debian based users uh, I, I i've grown accustomed to just typing this in but if you're on a debian based system you can just do the update dash grub and then let's install our grub using grub install and dev sda make sure not to put any digits after sda or your actual hard drive because we're doing it to the device not the partition and reboot and you see grub has returned and we can now boot back into our linux okay so now let's go ahead and really mess up grub so that was just a mild mess up with just a bad config file and then we made grub. Now let's pretend someone does something really dumb and just deletes the entire grub folder. Now you notice the prompt that said grub and then the greater than sign. Well, this is actually gonna make it say grub rescue because we're gonna wipe out grub for the most part. So uh, let's go into our boot folder. We'll do a list and this time we're just gonna kill grub and then we'll reboot now from here it can't load mods we can't do anything now from this screen we know we're missing a lot of files and we need to actually replace those files before we can proceed no amount of things we do in here can really do much of anything as far as repairing grub from this stage so what we need to do is install our live media so i'm going to go ahead and insert the live media and then we're just going to go ahead and reboot our system and i've been having a little bit of an error sometime on that spectry mitigation sometimes it hangs on it and i just reboot a couple times and it gets past it all right so this is our live cd we have booted into we actually from here need to go ahead and mount our drive so we'll go mount dev sda1 to mnt and then we're going to ch root into it now since this is arch we do arch ch root mnt and from here we can go ahead and rebuild our grub so i'm first i'm going to just make the directory and boot just to give it somewhere to go and grub dash mk config o boot grub grub dot config this remakes all those files in the folder so we can actually go down into grub now see what we get so we only have grub.config and now when we do the grub install let's see what happens and you'll see all those files now have come back from here we can just simply exit and reboot okay there's our grub we'll hit enter and we should get back into arch here and there we go right back in and that is all there is to repairing grub now please note like there's some differences with arch and let's say a debian based install but not too much uh you can use most of these commands universal on, on a debian base just remember it's update dash grub instead of that whole grub dash mk config dash output all that you can just do update dash grub it's a nice little wrapper for debian base install so uh, not nearly as complex as Arch. Okay, and that was it. As far as recovering Grub, it's so much easier than using Boot Manager once you understand the syntax and also understand the recovery process. Both I can do usually within a couple minutes, so not a too terribly complex procedure. It's just mainly understanding it and how to do it. And hopefully that kind of sheds some light on it for you. So next time Grub messes up or you're doing a customization and it goes awry, you'll easily be able to follow these steps and get your Grub back up and going. But let me know in the comments section below if it did work for you or not. And if you'd like to contribute and help make more videos like this one, consider visiting me on Patreon, and I'll see you in the next video.